Google came out with some big announcements, new LLM uh, and new silicon. What, what, first of all, but what were you more excited about, LLM or silicon? I have to tell you, I'm probably excited by 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 both equally, and I know that's a that's a uh, they cop that's out. A, that's a total cop out. But I got to tell you, you know, I see silicon, and I want to I want to dive into it. I mean, there there's more LLMs coming out uh, than there than there is new silicon. But uh, uh, Google came out with a TPU V5P, and you know what is a TPU? TPU is uh, an ASIC. Uh, that is likely built by Broadcom, that is hyper connected uh, together, right? We talked about the bandwidth uh, uh, part uh, to do a training and inference. And it's the fifth generation, and you might argue it's the sixth generation, but they're calling it uh, they're calling it 5P. And when it first came out, and I would say the first four generations, were really about internal use cases. So Google search, Google photos, and it was really targeted at, uh, machine learning and maybe a little bit of deep learning uh, in there. But as it related to Google Cloud, they really didn't open it up uh, to people until about the fourth generation. And I would say really opened it up on the fifth gen generation because when I talked with Google about V4, there really wasn't a lot of Google uh, Cloud uh, action. And, and I think the reason for that is, <laughs> excuse me, they may not have needed it. And then the early days it, in the enterprise, it was really an NVIDIA show uh, for for training and people wanted um, to have that CUDA CUDA compatibility, but you know as as Nvidia gets into 52 week lead times uh, on their on their AI solutions, as we see ASICs are absolutely more efficient, and that's not even debatable, folks. Okay, ASICs are just more. It just it, it's harder to program. So you have to put in that uh, you have to put in that layer now. I feel like TPU V5, I, I just got to say it, I feel like it was rushed, okay? Um, not a lot of preview time on it, uh, not a lot of time to soak. It, it just it just hit. And, you know, the news outlets that covered it first were basically consumer, right? So it's like, wait a second, what does this mean to the enterprise? Listen, I love consumer, and I think it's sexy, and I think it's cool, but it's like analysts, we don't, we don't really impact that, right? So I have I have a, I have a lot of questions, uh, and then when I look at the I call the raw specifications, which don't always matter, like bandwidth and stuff like that, AMD and Nvidia kind of run circles uh, around it. Okay, uh, and also there was no competitive uh, uh, comparisons, and you know you might say, well, you know AWS didn't have competitive comparisons, uh, but you know what they said? They said that Tranium Two is the highest performance most efficient chip to do training and inference for LLMs that they offer. And what that means by proxy is we're higher performance than the NVIDIA H100. And I don't know if that translated to the H200 uh, that they uh, announced as well, but still it doesn't matter. So you really don't know at the end of the day uh, what, this, what, this, uh, what this can do. Um, the, the second question I have, probably the final one, is um, um, how is this available to uh, Google Cloud customers? I think it's through Vertex AI. I, I could be wrong. I, 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 I hope it is. But uh, my final editorial comment is uh, the timing was interesting, uh, which was the morning of AMD's uh, advancing AI event. And, you know, I don't. Maybe that's because it was a micro uh, AMD event uh, had Azure and Oracle Cloud, and it didn't include Google with AMD's new stuff. But when I was at AMD, I was Google's largest chip supplier in 2005, and you know to be a partner that long, like 18, 19 years, and to drop a bomb right in front of uh, your partner's event was interesting. Yeah. So Pat, you you. you... You hit a lot of the high notes. Um, first of all, you know, the problem, you know, we're, we're in a bit of this um, era of leapfrog and compete and everybody's showing everything and wanting to get it out to market fast. I think some of the reason that, you know, we're seeing whether it's silicon innovation coming faster than uh, maybe would be optimal or it's LLMs being launched faster than what would be op optimal. To me, it's more about, uh, you know, needing to continuously show progress in the public eye. 
And Google, you know, I think learned its lesson, I hope so, on the first BARD announcement where it definitely fell on its face. Uh, but I do think it recovered quite nicely. Uh, this one's interesting, yeah. Pat, because the Gemini demo is really impressive, but there are some discrepancies. And the, some of the discrepancies in the market are, well, was the demo real? And so I've been reading a lot about this, and, and I want to kind of give a twofold answer to this. I think, Pat, there's always been a little bit of, you know, the behind the curtain of a demo at any event, you know, at a, an event, you know, it's so. The question is on a scale of, you know, hey, we kind of optimized it a little bit into the demo video versus we pushed the truck down a hill. I think it's a little further <laughs> to the left than the right, but I do think that um, this is kind of one of these where where there's explanations and the problem what people don't understand is we're seeing progress being made in real time. And so everything the Gemini demo did it is capable of doing but it wasn't capable of doing in the exact way it was presented um like the rock paper scissors demo right now it couldn't do it in real time watching the hand gestures back to back to back but if you prompted it with an image of all three at the same time and hinted that it's a game it could do that and and i like the analogy of that because what we're seeing is what we saw is the end state this is where we're going to be and we probably will be there in a blink of an eye but we're not actually quite there yet but this stuff is being optimized in real time. I think the same thing can be said about the silicon. Look, they're training the model. And I think the real important thing Google wanted to get out there is that it's building silicon that can be used to both train its own models, which is a big sort of statement piece that all the hyperscalers are wanting to make right now. And AWS was able to do this first in, with Tranium 2 and Anthropic. Um, and of course, what it's going to do with Titan. And Google doesn't want to be left behind. So it's like, hey, we're doing this. But yes, this is definitely not the last piece of silicon they're going to develop. And I'm pretty sure they probably already are taping in or, you know, working on their next two, three versions of this thing. So it's kind of like, am I happy with where it's at right now? Do they make as much headway? Are they ready to compete with the, you know, I mean, I saw some analysts write about the, G, the H200 like it's already out. So, I mean, we love to tell stories about things that don't exist. And then we make it look like they do. And, <clears throat> you know, vendors love when people do that. But the truth is, Everything's a bit in motion right now. Um, here, was the, here was the sensitivity, though. You know, it's like, so let's dial back a year ago. I think when you and I were at the Microsoft Copilot event, and we went right from the big announcement a year ago to they, they let us, uh, you know, with a person next to us, uh, ask Copilot questions, right? What's, what's hey, I have uh, $700 and I'm in Barcelona. What should I do? Right. Tell me what you would recommend. And here here's where I'm there. And, you know, uh, it it got it right. Most of the time it, 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 it made mistakes. And then a couple of weeks after Google does their first Bard event, uh, their stock goes down like 10 percent. And, you know, you can't even find the replay. Right? It was a disaster. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then and then, you know, but you and I the whole time are like this, this. This is a marathon and not a sprint, okay? Yep. And 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 here we are. So I even think, even with Google uh, stubbing potentially, I mean, they stubbed their toe in the press, okay, on this in the way that they did the demo. Uh, I still don't see any knockout blows that you know miraculously, you know, takes you know makes Google search lose thirty points of market share uh, uh, overnight, but. I, I think it's very important for Google to do a follow-up where they just nail it, kind of like they did with their enterprise uh, event that that you and I attended, and then and then at I/O, right? They came through, and it was like very credible, very planned. But I just thought this was rushed. Yeah, a little bit, and and like I said, every demo along the way has had just a little bit of Hollywood, and so the question is: is pure manipulation versus? You know Hollywood effects, and so <laughs> the car, the car down the that that is so good. That is solid gold, Dan. Yeah, thank you. That's a that's a six five annual highlight as we wrap up the year.